Hey guys, welcome to the photo department. Today I'm drinking some cold coffee that was hot at some point. Now it is cold. This is a drip kit coffee. It's actually Kenyan coffee. And it's actually pretty good cold, which is surprising. Kind of got this plum thing going on. I dig it. Obviously drinking it out of my Heath mug, one of my many Heath mugs. Today I decided to film outside again, and this time we are in the beautiful Tilden Regional Park, which is in the Berkeley Hills. It's really lush and green because it's been raining. I think it's pretty funny that in the two years I've been doing this channel, I wait until the rainiest season we've had in a long time to start filming outdoors. But everything is really beautiful because it's been raining. So today at Tilden, there's a lot of people here, surprisingly, there's a lot of kids. It's a Saturday, so I guess people are bringing their kids out to run off their energy, even though it's soaking wet out. But that's cool, that's great. It's cool to see all these families out here. It's cool to see people still going out and enjoying nature. There are some children, oh, there they are, screaming bloody murder over there. I don't think you can hear them, but they're very loud, but it's cool. We're cool. It's great. There's a lot of people around, so I keep getting ambushed by people walking by, uh, which is fine. It's just embarrassing. I don't know if you know this, but videotaping yourself outside around general people, it's kind of embarrassing because they don't know what you're doing and they assume you're doing some nerdy shit, which I am. So the title of this episode is ambiguous on purpose because I wanted to reveal something in the video and not have everyone know what it is beforehand because that's boring. As you can see, I'm not filming this episode on my X-Pro2, which is the camera that I film all my episodes with. So what gives? What am I doing? What am I shooting on? Good question. <laughs> I will tell you. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to show you. Take this picture. Bam. There it is. I did it. I purchased a brand new Fuji X-T2. And I mean brand new as in I bought it used from a college kid who barely used it and it doesn't look like anyone's ever touched this camera. I got a really, really good deal on it. I got my tax return and I saved the majority of it because saving is important. So make sure you do that. Save money. I've been doing this channel for two years and I've really been dedicated to upping my production value and spending more time and investing time and effort into making this channel really interesting content wise as well as professional and I think that one of the first things that I realized I needed to upgrade in order to make this channel as good as it can be is to have a dedicated video camera. I knew I didn't need anything crazy flashy with a bunch of different features and all this crazy stuff. I just needed a camera that was capable of producing full HD with really good quality that would seamlessly kind of integrate into the system I'm already using and be easy to use. Also, since I'm a single person, I don't have a crew or friends to help me shoot most of the time, and so I'm doing all this by myself for the most part. Being able to have a system that I can rely on that's easy to use when I'm by myself was really important. When the X-T3 came out and I started seeing videos about that, I was really interested in it because obviously the video capabilities have just been jacked up way high on the X-T3. They're really, really serious. Fujifilm is really, really serious about making the X-T3 a real contender in a compact mirrorless video system. And I was instantly very interested in that because that camera has all the features you would need to do content for stuff like this, like a YouTube channel, and make it look like really professional and really great. But uh, the problem, I still couldn't justify spending that much money on a brand new camera especially because as shiny and new and beautiful as that camera is, I don't need all of those features. I just don't. I don't need 4K, full readout, non-pixel binning, non-line skipping, whatever. I don't need 10-bit 422 output because I'm not color grading this footage. I'm just using classic Chrome. I just don't need all this extra stuff that serious filmmakers would need because I'm not really a serious filmmaker. I do enjoy filmmaking and I do enjoy the process and I like learning about it, but I'm still a novice when it comes to that. Uh, I would love to learn more, but I need to do more time learning more. And once I get to a point where I can maybe jump into doing some filmmaking on my own, 
uh, then I can start thinking about investing in a video system that's really expensive and has all the bells and whistles, but I don't need that right now. I just don't. The cool thing about the X-T2 is it goes right into my camera bag next to my X-Pro2. I get to use all the same lenses, same adapters, same vintage lenses, uh, same SD card, same batteries, whatever. And that was really important. I had considered looking at like the Panasonic GH4 or GH5 or some other, I guess, more highly regarded video type cameras, but none of those systems would be able to integrate into my current system as seamlessly as another Fuji camera. And the X-T3 obviously being a no brainer, I looked online for used X-T2s and then I realized I could find an X-T2 for way less than a thousand bucks. So I thought, okay, I guess I should do some research. So I did a bunch of research and I realized that there's a lot of people who use the X-T2 for video, filmmaking, vlogging, YouTube content, serious video, whatever stuff. <laughs> That's a technical term, video whatever stuff. And I realized that there are a lot of serious people out there using the X-T2 for serious work. And that made me excited because I was worried that the X-T2 would be too out of date being a two, three, two year old camera. I believe, two and a half. But then upon further research, I realized the X-Pro2 came out before the X-T2, and I've been filming all my YouTube videos with this camera, just kind of like kludge together in like a makeshift kind of system that worked, but wasn't ideal. And I've been getting along fine, so an X-T2 would be an upgrade, and damn, I've only had it for a couple days, but yeah, it's already been an upgrade. I took it around the park and did some video clips just to kind of show the scenery and there's the uh, the spillway and all that stuff going on and it's really really beautiful already like looking at that back screen being able to tilt it like oh my god that is so great obviously when i first got the x-pro2 it made so much sense to me that rangefinder design for everyday shooting but then you know i didn't think that the xt2's ergonomics would fit me it seemed like the camera body was too small anyway for my hands it just seemed like the rangefinder design of the X-Pro2 just fit me so much better. But in reality, both these cameras fit in these own little compartments that work equally well for me in different ways. I took the X-T2 shooting last night to shoot some portraits of my friend and his son just for fun and just to try out the camera as far as stills goes. And like, it was really nice to shoot. It was very, very comfortable. That grip is really comfortable. It just fits in your hand differently. Uh, I love the way the X-Pro2 fits in my hand, but the X-T2 has this whole other kind of ergonomics that make a lot of sense. And I, it makes a lot of sense why a lot of people use the X-T2 for photo and video, because it's a very comfortable camera to use. Autofocus is, as you would expect, it's very fast, it's very accurate. I enjoy it. You're seeing it in action right now with the uh, continuous autofocus. I'm sure that's working fine, I guess, we'll see. Dynamic range is good. I'm here in a pretty dynamic setting. I've got like some pretty dark stuff back here and there's some bright light. I'm under a tree, but there's cloud cover and fog and I'm getting like a lot of omnidirectional soft light. So I'm sure it looks really pretty. Now I've always defended the ISO selector on the X-Pro2 and I will to the day that I die. I think that it's very novel. It's a great callback to vintage film cameras and I really, really like it. But having a dedicated ISO dial is really nice too, and the fact that it's lockable is cool. Having the lockable shutter speed dial is also cool. I don't know why they didn't do it on this camera, but it would, it would have been great. The thing they did on the X-T3, which is make the exposure compensation knob smaller and inset more, is really smart because I could see how you could hit that exposure comp knob and knock it out of place. But honestly, it's pretty stiff, so it's not really a, an issue for me. I'm not going to go over all the... Uh, things in the X-T2 because this has been out forever. There's tons of videos about it. So I just wanted to talk about how this is my new video rig and I'm really, really excited to make new content with it. I'm done with this coffee. I'm gonna go take some more photos and video around Tilden because it is really beautiful. There's tons of really picturesque, beautiful fog over there. Uh, everything's so green. I, it looks like, am I like in England or like Wales? Or am I in Yosemite? Or am I in the Pacific Northwest somewhere? You don't see it up here like this very often, so it's really nice to see. So thank you guys for watching. Once again, follow me on Instagram at Christopher Sturm on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook uh, for the photo department. There's a photo department Facebook page. Make sure you check out Heath Ceramics, most well-designed, beautiful ceramic pieces. I use these all the time. No, I'm not sponsored by Heath Ceramics. I would not turn down a sponsorship by Heath Ceramics, though. Doubt it will happen. 
boy can dream. Also stay tuned in this next couple weeks, there are gonna be some more gear related review videos coming up. Uh, I have a giveaway coming up. I'm still trying to work out what that's gonna look like, but I'm setting up a giveaway where I'm gonna give away three prizes to three people. I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet. Uh, it's gonna happen, <laughs> so keep an eye out for that. Yeah. All right, way to go team. Really knocked it out of the park with this one. I'm really proud of you. I'm really excited to get this video footage home to edit it because uh, I haven't seen any of the video out of this specific X-T2 yet. I've seen other people's work with X-T2s and obviously it looks great. Screaming kids, there they are. They're coming closer, shit. I got a pizza, and that's literally the best thing in the world. I love pizza. So after reviewing some of the footage from the X-T2, I decided to address some things. First off, I have never seen such cinematic video from something that I've produced, so that's really cool. It looks really nice. Uh, and I see all these videos comparing the X-T2 to the X-T3, and uh, 6500 from Sony and the 6400 or whatever the hell the newer one's called. Kind of trying to figure out if the Fuji X-T2 is worth getting in 2019 um, being a, a last generation camera. Uh, in my opinion, for what I'm doing, and for what most YouTubers are doing, or for anybody who shoots primarily in 1080p, yes, totally. So, I don't use 4K, so I can't really speak to that. I know that um, the X-T2 captures in 4K and then downscales to 1080p, so you get a full sensor readout when you um, record in full HD, and then you get a really sharp image because of that, so I can attest to that. The image is fantastic. With the 120 frames per second slow motion, with all the 1080p settings, with the autofocus, with the weather sealing, with the awesome features for uh, video, I would say that yes, this is absolutely a contender in 2019. The X-T3 is a really great camera, but it's the newest, latest, and greatest, and it might have some stuff that you don't need. It definitely has stuff I don't need. It is a beautiful camera and Fuji really did a good job. Whoa, making that camera. Oh man, this is not thought out well. So the X-T3 is clearly a well-made, very full feature, great camera, but is it absolutely necessary to upgrade over the X-T2? For my stuff, no, absolutely not. The X-T2 is a bargain to be had. Uh, used under a thousand bucks, which is really crazy, and it's kind of hard to recommend anything else in this price range because there really isn't anything else in this price range that does 
as well as this secondhand. I recommend this camera to anybody who wants to do full HD video or even 4K um, on a budget and who is either already involved in the Fuji ecosystem or who wants to start shooting on the Fuji ecosystem. If you're a serious filmmaker, I don't know. It's all personal preference, really. But for me, I'm super excited about this camera. I think it's really cool. And I'm gonna use it a lot. All my YouTube videos going forward are going to be filmed on the Fuji X-T2. Uh, most likely on the X-T2 with the 23 millimeter F2. I have the 18 millimeter to 55. F2.8 to F4 on right now because I want the widest shot possible as I'm driving in my truck. Whoever said that recording video while you're driving was a good idea was probably drunk. And you also should not drive if you were drunk. So don't listen to that person. I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> I thought it would be cool. Is it cool? I don't know. Audio in here is probably garbage.